Welcome to the Love Holistic Living Podcast, your roadmap to heal and align mind, body, and soul and become intuitive through food, pleasure, and spirituality with your host and Italian friend, Sara Garofalo. Now, friends, and welcome back to another episode in which we're going to discuss the challenges of being em- empath or empathic. And this is something that will help you with your self-awareness journey and self-healing journey because if you said yes to the previous lesson then this one is a must to listen to because I didn't know I had these patterns and the sooner you realize again you become aware then the sooner you can shift now shifting requires a lot of your energy and a lot of intention But everything is possible and there are miracles in the world that are happening at every second of this life. Now, an empath is a sponge, which means that he or she absorbs other people's energy like if they were their own, which means that you can be super centered and then you can enter a meeting of, you know, 10 people, five people, three people, and then someone is in a bad mood you absorb it and then you go home and you're like all mad and you're like screaming and angry and you're like was it me is it me like most of the time people don't understand that they've absorbed other people's energy and that is why self-awareness meditation and really understanding your energy like the feeling of your energy is a must for an empath because you need to master your own energy you need to understand how your energy feels to understand the energy of someone else coming in okay so again i want to start with being an empath can be incredibly rewarding once you fully accept it you can understand how gifted you are and how powerful you can be as an empath but If you think that this is a curse, which can feel like a curse, then I hope that this episode will help you shift in the next ones to help you reclaim your power. Now, being an empath can also mean having deeper, deeper relationships, meaningful experiences in life, greater trust, and a unique ability to help others. A lot of times, empaths are healers, and a healer can have many different formats, like I can be and have the format of a healer, like someone who moves energy, but a healer can also be a doctor or a nurse or a teacher. We're helping other humans either improve themselves, learning how to read, educate them, we can help others heal, and so forth and so on. So oftentimes empaths are born as healers. They want to help people. Now, it can come with some challenges. And specifically today, we're going to be going through four major challenges of an empath, which is one, the inability to separate others' emotions from your own. That is the classic example that I shared with you previously. You're entering a meeting, you're leaving your house, you're entering a meeting, you come home and you're completely different you're maybe angry you may be depressed you may be upbeat that is because you've just absorbed someone else's energy that wasn't your own because the natural state of an empath honestly is very calm and peaceful like we're very grounded when we are by ourselves and especially in nature we're very peaceful now you put us together with someone who is a rock star and We become rock stars because we have, we can't separate other people's emotions from our own. What you need to master here is again, your energy. The simple step to do this is spending time in nature. And I know it sounds so silly. And most people, when I tell them, they're like, oh, it doesn't work. I've tried it. And I'm like, no, you haven't. And so then he or she tries it for even a week straight. And then you start noticing the change in your nervous system. You start noticing that nature grounds you so much that it's a must. You can do that if you live in a busy city 
by meditating every single day, but you need to make sure that meditation is efficient. Not just, oh, I'm meditating, but if you are anxious all the time, that meditation is not happening in your life. And meditation is the act of stillness of the mind. Most people who run a busy life can't meditate. And I tell people, well, try something else. Try meditation in action. That could be jogging. Try walking on the beach, in a park, but it's you and you. Like try walking and stay present with the trees, the steps you're taking, the birds you're seeing. So the act of meditation can happen at any point in time of the day, even when you're washing dishes. But you must be in the absence of your thoughts and in your present moment, in the act of washing dishes. Like a kid. That's why I love spending time with kids and I love and adore my kids because I need to be super present. So they're the ones that are like, oh, mommy, look at this toy. It's red and it's, they describe it, right? And this is doing that. They're so anchored down into the present moment. And I love that. But meditation and or nature will help you ground into your energy so that you are aware that other energies are entering your body. So it's the ability to separate you and other people's energy that is going to happen when you start meditating and grinding your energy. Elevate your wellness with the Blue Green Algae Superfood. A big thank you to one of our favorite sponsors, Salus Health, which is the reason why I feel so vibrant and healthy with boundless energy today. This Blue Green Algae Superfood is packed with nutrients and antioxidant, which has been a game changer for my well-being and it will be for yours. It will help you boost your immunity, increase energy levels. It's a natural supplement for weight loss, enhance mental clarity, and it's rich in vitamins, minerals, essential amino acids, and superfood nourishes your body from the inside out. Don't forget to visit saluz.io. S A L U Z dot I O again salus dot I O and don't forget to use the code Love Holistic to receive your initial twenty percent off your order and embrace the goodness, embrace life. Number two difficulty trying to voice your own needs or set boundaries. Yes, this is a huge one. You are probably a people pleaser. And saying no to people can feel like a sword that and it's entering your body every time. And you're like, I'm so in pain and I'm, you know, regretting doing this. And or I am procrastinating setting boundaries because you are so attached to that person's energy that immediately you know that that person is going to feel disappointed and or sad yet you take it in you need to separate your journey from other people's journey it's not your responsibility to take on their journey it's not and here is a mindset shift that has helped all of my clients in setting strong boundaries the more you say yes when you mean no you Keep abandoning yourself at the expenses of others. And when you say no, finally, to someone, when you set strong boundaries, you help them grow, period. You help someone grow when you stop taking on their responsibility. And this is something that coaches must hear more often. This is something that just... People need to take and understand more often that as parents, we need to hear this because we have our own responsibilities and then the other person has their own responsibilities. So setting strong boundaries helps people grow and it's okay to let them sit in their sadness or guilt and understand that that's not yours to take. 
and that you can still love them completely with open arms. Number three, adapting your personality to what you think others need or expect. This is something that got me in trouble with dating for many years because I, due to the fact that I am so empathic, I started to mold myself in all the relationships to what they wanted me to be rather than being myself and set those strong boundaries of like, this is who I am. This is what I like. And I may be shifting a little bit, obviously compromising for the relationship, but I'm not changing who I am. I'm not molding everything about me to fit your own needs. And so I would end up getting into relationships and then later on, months would pass by and then I would blow up like a bomb. So then I realized there was a pattern and I realized that it was because I was adapting my personality to their needs. So what I needed to do was setting strong boundaries, but also what I needed to do was knowing myself and I didn't know myself at all. So if you're in the same boat where you don't know who you are, well, I went on a self-personal healing journey and I started traveling and, and just experiencing life because I knew that I needed to understand how I reacted truly and what I liked and I didn't know because all of my life I've been adapting to people. So if you find yourself in this, and or want to break patterns, then click the link below and set up a consultation and or a one-on-one. -on -one. But let's take a look at number four, over apologizing and feeling unnecessarily burdened by the weight of others' emotion. I can tell you every time I get on a phone call when people keep saying, oh, I'm sorry, oh, I'm sorry, oh, I'm so sorry. And it's telling me something of their life story. And they feel like they're a burden to others. And I specifically instruct my clients, especially the ones that have this trait, this challenge, to bug me. And I'm like, you're paying for a service. And I want you to text me and ask me what you need. Because at the end of the day, you have resentment. You end up building resentment towards other people because you don't voice your needs. And it's not just towards me. It's not just towards your spouse or your friends. It's stemming from you because you feel like you're burdening people with your own needs, but then you get angry because your needs are not met. But if you don't voice them, people can't hear you. So over apologizing and feeling burden, you feel like a burden and then you take on other people's problem. Like... A classic example is a mother who takes on the daughter or the son's problem. And I can understand that I'm a parent and I can understand that we love our kids so much and we love our spouse so much. But when you start feeling in distress, like in your physical body, because of something that she or he is going through, that's when you take on other people's burden and emotions. And you can't do that. You have to let people go through life. You can't save everybody. And that is one of the downfalls of an empath wants to save everybody, wants to be the saver. It's not a bad trait. It's just you need to realize who you're saving. So here are some tips that hopefully will help you along the gems that we just shared. But know your triggers and limitations. Practice saying no without explaining why. That was a big one for me. Just say no. Prioritize alone time for reflection and decompression. Respect your empathic needs. You're human and you deserve your needs to be met in a healthy way. And use shielding techniques like to shield yourself from the outer environment and or negative environment to combat sensory overload. And if you're interested in mastering all of this, I have a course that I'm placing the link below that is called the Empath Survival Course. And... It has 10 plus video lessons you can apply right now that are going to help you take the empathy deeper into a superpower and not a curse. So they're going to help you set strong boundaries and train your intuition and prioritize yourself. So I'll place the link below and hopefully this was helpful and I will see you in the next video. A big ciao from your Italian friend. Yeah.